So uh, I've been writing JavaScript for the last five or six years. Uh, my first memory of JavaScript is crying under the night uh, under my desk at about three at night, trying to figure out why I wouldn't do my Ajax request, uh, even though I copy pasted it faithfully from uh, W three schools and all that, wasn't happening. That was the beginning of a long and romantic journey, so to speak. Anyway, so I've been writing for a while and. Uh, my deal is that I've learned usually with mistakes. I've worked with bad teams, I've worked with good teams, I've worked with corporates, I've worked with startups. And as it turns out, uh, best practices are there for a reason. It isn't just about process. Process is irritating when it comes to a whole lot of other things, but if you get yourself into a nice routine when you're developing, uh, especially front-end code, and you have a seamless way of actually making like a very short trip from writing the code to deploying it, it turns out your productivity increases by uh, like multiples. Uh, because you get to see your uh, results live instead of going through a build process and QA and this and that. Uh, if you can do a bunch of that as part of your own development workflow, you get to a place where you're super productive and uh, you start seeing real life results because you can match you know, uh, your production environment uh, even more closely on your yeah, yeah. environment. So along the way, along these, uh, along with all the teams that I've worked, I've, I've come, come across at least the basic things that you do. Um, Maybe not something as hardcore as doing, you know. You can do your performance test when it comes to loading and all that, but when it comes to running performance, that's a case-by-case -case basis. What you really want is to make sure that you have the basics right. No premature optimization, but you get your basics right to make sure your foundation is right. Uh, so my talk is going to be about those five or six things that you can line up in a row and seamlessly throw into your project without, um, without changing any of your own development work style. Uh, I will talk about how uh, these things affect uh, production environment, specifically when it comes to um, page load times, uh, response times when the user is actually using it, um, the order in which these assets should be loaded uh, and how it affects your first impression. And I'll, uh, I'll, act, I'll be doing this by uh, taking a small app that I built in the beginning, just front-end code, and by the end of the talk, we'll have a deploy, deployable ready build that you can deploy to anywhere and show you how to integrate it in workflow. That's, that's the goal for my talk. That's what I'm going to do. Will there be a demo? The, the whole thing is going to be a demo. Like it's a, it's, it's a workshop. It isn't necessarily a lecture. It's, okay, <coughs> great. I will tell you how I'm going to start. I'm going to start with here is my code that I've just written for the last three days. Okay. And now I need to get it up on the server so people can see it and go live. What are the things that we do? Step one, step two, step three, step four. The uh, good thing about all these steps is once you do it, you don't have to do it again. It's there as your foundation. That's the entire deal, that it integrates into your workflow and you don't even see it, it's invisible. Ideally, you do a one-line build and it gets deployed and all's good with the world and, and your CEO really likes you saying, good job, man, that's good.